Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. The following production is part of the We Be Geeks Podcast Collective. From days long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe, comes a legend. The dream that came through a million years, that lived on through all the tears. It came here, the Fandom Nexus. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to our host as he plugged in his microphone. I have a podcast! Here he is, your spider pan, Jeremy. Yes, indeedy, I'm here. I'm here again for more fun and excitement. And if those of you who are Patreon subscribers are getting to watch some video... And I even did some fun stuff in the intro for the video just to give it, give you some worthwhile fun. And uh, so, yeah, we're back with Lost Boy Philip again. And we're hoping Jonathan Johnson of Jizz Radio might get to join us later. Uh, we, I've had some trouble getting everything coordinated for the show this week. And it's been a hectic day, but we're here. I'm forgoing the news in Trailer Park, although I might have some of that maybe later this week. Maybe we'll just do a second show this week. But we're going to talk... X Men '97 plus the classic X Men cartoon, and then of course that's right. We got a chance to go see Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire, and we're going to talk all about that. I've got some notes on the production. I'm going to pull up and everything. We're just going to have a grand old time. Philip and I just babble on like we normally would, and you're going to love us because <laughs> if you're here, I'm sure you 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 enjoy the show anyway. And I'm hoping you do enjoy the show. I got to share something. I, I sent Philip a message on that, but I'm going to go ahead and share this with all of you now listening because I think it might be important to this, and I'm just going to let the music play, because I don't really have any more to say about what the show is, other than it's X-Men and it's Ghostbusters. So, but I sent I, I sent Philip a message on this, and I want to discuss it with you, the audience, because this might affect the podcast. So, as you all know, probably, if you've been around long enough, this used to be a, a Disney show, and I had a pretty good size audience. When I left the Disney, well, I, as I say, I didn't so much leave Disney as Disney left me, as they've left a lot of us. They're no longer right. Walt's company. They're really not the, the, the parks of the middle class. I mean, you can't afford this anymore. I mean, it's they've really gone off the rails. That's um, right. So I, I, it's like, you know, I'm going to continue this on my own. And one of the nice things about this becoming the fandom nexus that it has, and I've dropped even Neverland off of the main title of it, although we're still Neverlanders around here and we're Lost Boys and Pixies. It's still there. Sure. Uh, I felt more free that I could have more more faith-based guests and share a little bit more of my faith on the show. And I've seen the audience kind of shrink and dwindle and dwindle. And I was like, okay, well, I've got to slowly rebuild this up. And you, listener, you, dear listener, can help build this show up by simply sharing it with other people, telling people how if you're enjoying the show, uh, you can help us out on Patreon. Right now, I have no support on Patreon. I'm paying for this show completely out of my own pocket, and I enjoy doing it. But I was getting very discouraged, thinking, well, golly, you know, maybe uh, as we wrap up the season 11 here, or maybe when I hit 500 episodes, I'll just call it quits. Maybe this is where, where I'm supposed to stop. And as I've had those thoughts in my head, I had a dream the other night. And uh, so this is kind of an odd dream. Okay, so we're, I was in Sora, some sort of a building, and there was this four-legged monstrosity. It's this horrible thing showed up, and it was attacking people. And I was kind of helping, you know, like get people out of the building. We got to run for it. Got it. We got to get out. This thing's horrible. What's ever well, this monster is going to deal with this? And as I got outside the building, I got you know, and see all people getting out, and people were still trapped inside. I remember saying, "I wish I could fight back against this monster. Do something." To where a voice told me, give glory to God and you will have the power to fight back against the monster. So I just start praising God. I said, thank you, Lord, for the power to fight back for these people. And when I'd praise the Lord, when those words would come out my mouth, it was like this blue, fiery, 
but it would come out in billows. Like when you, when, when you see like a big mass of fire, like on TV or whatever, and it billows up in smoke and big, big puffs of smoke. Right. But it was, it was like blue and it would come out in a smoky fire out of my mouth and it would go straight out in front of me. What as I would praise the Lord or whatever, and eventually I start singing, and I, I remember I was like I recognized the praise song I was singing, but yet I don't remember what it was I was singing. But I went inside and I saw well people were hurt, or they were scared or discouraged, and I would praise the Lord with them, or I and and they joined in singing with me, and we would go we were going together, and every what, every song of praise, every glory to God I gave came out as this blue light. And it, it, the people it touched were healed. They were encouraged. They joined with me, and we were together going through the building. And I never saw that monster again, but I saw people who needed it, and I, I, we would sing to them, and they would get hit by the blue light, and they would smile and become joyful, and we'd praise God together, and they'd join me, and we'd sing together. But now the odd thing, there are some people who came along that we would sing to them, and they would shy and back away. They didn't want the blue light to touch them because it had a limited range, you know, so they'd back away from me, but it's like, well, I can't force them to join us in singing and praising. But so I'd move on to the next people who wanted to hear it. And I've been wondering, and this was Saturday night, like or, or early Sunday morning or whatever. I had this. I meant to talk to you on Sunday about this, Phil, but you didn't get a chance to. And I have been wondering, okay, God, what are you telling me to do? Because I I feel like I'm being instructed. And what's really laid on my heart, because you know, I was feeling very discouraged about keeping this show going. And I I kind of won't think that, and I'm going to pray about this more, but I kind of think that maybe my voice is going out in this podcast and I want to be an encouragement to people, but maybe I need to give more praise to God on this and focus more, even make this more of a faith show, faith-based show that it has been. And hopefully that is reaching out to you and you'll want to join in with us and sharing in because we're still going to have some fun and retro fun. I'm, I'm going to continue to do that, but I, I feel maybe God saying more, more praise me more in the show and give glory to God and of how great things can be in life. Cause there's a lot of discouraging things out there right now in this life. I mean, right. we've had even just uh, this morning there, a bridge had fallen in Baltimore and yeah, it's people, terrible. Uh, there's, there's terrible things going on in the world. There's at least six people missing, they said. Yeah, I, it's just heartbreaking. And I feel bad for yeah, you know, the, the people who, the ship malfunction, who are on board yes. trying to steer it. How must they feel? Oh, crashing. sure. Oh, my goodness. I mean, there's... there's that, that bridge has been around a long time, yeah. too. But there's, there's so much bad in the world that I, you know, you, you, if you can praise God in the darkness, you can praise God anywhere, right? <laughs> Amen. Know? Amen. But Amen. the praise to God and sharing of him is sharing a light and a fire into the world that warms people and encourages people and gives them courage. And I'm thinking, well, maybe that's what I'm supposed to be doing is bringing you encouragement and courage to, and, and joy out into the world. Now there's going to be a case that we're going to come across something, but we're going to give her a bad review, but find a way to bring the joy and go ahead and I'll share more faith. I think in this show, yeah. Uh, than what we previously have done. I, I think it should become more of a focus. I think that's what God is maybe telling me to do. And maybe we reach more people, and maybe that means more people join with me. And I would love to hear from more people who listen to the show, sending emails. Uh, I get to interact with a few people on Facebook. Uh, and, you know, poor people who want to partner in with me, that's one of the things, like, you know, I don't have the Patreon support. I really don't. I'm paying it out in pocket. There are ways that you can support the show, and that would be like you coming alongside with me and joining me and singing the song uh, of praise to the Lord, and we just thank God that Amen. we have things to be thankful for, and maybe that's part of my problem. I'm not thankful enough. And I, I got to think how thankful, what all I've gotten to do in, uh, I'm, in the 11th year that I've been doing this, all the wonderful, fun things I've gotten to do, the people I've gotten to meet, I mean, I got to have a nice sit down with Katie Lee at Planet Comic Con, which was there awesome. Because, you, uh, you know, like my favorite radio show, Adventures in Odyssey, that even though we discovered it, I was awesome. college age, I think, when we showed the cartoon to the kids. And yep. then I found out, oh my gosh, there's a radio show. And uh, that's <laughs> got, got me loving radio drama to where I started checking out the library, old shows from the 40s and the 30s, I guess, even. So uh, doing this has really had a great impact on my life, and it has changed my life entirely. I mean, the career I'm at now is started because of this. And maybe well, I'm just not thankful done, enough and appreciating it. Well, I'd say your show is about fun, film, family, and faith. 
And that's what games. your show is. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that well, that's fun. That's fun. That's film, fun. family, and faith. Yeah. Yeah. Because family time. Well, it's when I was a kid. Family time we used to do on Saturday nights. My father. We would sometimes go out to the movies. Sometimes we go out to arcades and other things. Uh, but we that do family time. Would sometimes be sitting around in the living room, all of us watching a Disney show. Or mm-hmm. uh, so that's why you can still talk about old classic Disney. I call yeah. it. Rather be Pollyanna or whatever, and <laughs> so, uh, so we used to. Oh, well, we I got know, a remedy you that. We used to have years. <laughs> we'll, we'll do it, get to it. Uh Oh, I feel like we're. Yeah. Losing, there we go. We lost signal of you for a second there. I think. All right. Your video is glitching. Okay. But. Yeah. Yeah, fun, faith, and family, and having a good time. I mean, I mean, and heck, my family is three cats and a wife. And then, of course, Phil. Phil is an <laughs> honorary family. I call his mother my my second mom. So <laughs> I don't know if even if uh, like you can hear it in the recording from last week's show. I refer to Katie Lee as like almost like a third mom because she has been voices and stuff I've watched since I was a kid that were my formative shows. Gummy Bears, Muppet Babies. She mm-hmm. has she she referred on her website. She refers herself as the voice of your childhood, and she ain't kidding around. She has been the voice of my childhood. She did in her own weird way of voicing these characters helped raise me. So I I, I kind of referred to her as like a third mom. I don't know if she caught me saying it, but in a way, I was she watching has something been. yesterday, or maybe it was two days ago now. But I was watching something. I was talking about how all these wonderful voice actors have been around as long as we know. Sometimes we just don't know who they are, but they've been around our whole life and longer sometimes. <laughs> and they, it's, it's great that they're learning how much of an impact they've had on our lives as we've grown up. Uh, and now they get to come to conventions and we get to meet them. And, and I feel like we're, they're finally getting the credit they deserve here lately. Maybe for the use of the internet, you know, we, we finally get to go. It's like, there's the person who played that character that meant so much to me as a kid and still means a lot to me as an adult. Yeah. So it does mean yeah. a lot. So, but I just wanted to share that with all of you, the audience, that things may change around here and hopefully get a little better. And if you like what we're doing, please share this uh, with your friends. That's one way that you can really kind of come alongside and sing praise to God basically with me is share, 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 share with a bunch of people. Let's rebuild this show and let's bless people with it. That's going to be my goal. And I'm going to try my best because I think that's what God wants me to do is. I have a voice here and just consider this blue light, blue fire coming at your speakers or coming into your earbuds, however you're listening and hopefully giving you some encouragement. And uh, let's just be, let's learn to be thankful together and praise the Lord for what we have, even in those times we don't feel like we have it. And heck, I've even had, I'm not supposed to talk about some of the stuff that I've had some, let's just say I've had some stuff I've struggled with. God has really been blessing my wife and I. Uh, over over the past week with some surprises of what we didn't know was coming uh, that completely surprised and it was, was, was wonderful blessings and it really has helped us out a lot uh, with things that has been kind of a, a discouragement so you know God's taken care of me and uh, I want to I want to thank him for that definitely uh, he's he's basically he shows up sometimes he seems it feels like he he waits till the last minute but he waits he's a wizard is never late nor is he early he was Always arrives precisely when he means to for all you Lord of the Rings fans. God shows it precisely when he means to. And there it is. Right. But yeah, so let's talk some X Men. <laughs> 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 now, because, and I'm, I'm sure we've shared this before, but it's worth sharing the when this original series, because I, what did it start? Like 93? 92, right. well, I, I, Halloween. Yeah. Uh, they, they aired it. Yeah, because it ran for like five I, seasons. So yeah, 92. Yeah. Alan too, when when and I remember coming over to your house mm-hmm. on a Halloween morning. Yep, and we, were, we watched. We were going to have some you, fun. You that recorded. Day. I was watching it. Oh my goodness, what a great day! Yeah. That was one of my favorite days. Yeah, sitting and there watching that I, premiere episode. I had stopped trick or treating, and uh, sure your did. mother had went out and bought <laughs> us. Your your mother who went out and bought us uh, some uh, Batman Returns candy, yeah. and uh, and I was she was so sweet, and uh, we. And I, of course, brought my big two liter of Diet Mountain Dew. Yep. And I remember, I remember that we were so excited. So we, I had dressed up with this Halloween outfit and all. And what happened was, not a whole lot of people came. We had like a haunted yard or whatever. Yeah. And not yeah. a whole lot of people came. So what we ended up doing was, I went out and w- grabbed my pillowcase, and w- we decided to go trick or treating that night. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we got, and we, I drive a pillowcase, and we've got. I mean, that 
neighborhood was giving out full size candy bars, two or three sometimes. And that it was, was a nice so neighborhood fun. to trick or treat. It was. The, but I remember that when we saw that. I already liked the X Men because mm-hmm. I remember seeing the. Um, maybe it was the Hanna Barbera, but I remember Hanna Barbera showed it with some of their cartoons around that time. Yeah. It was like Sun, whatever they call yeah, it. It was part of uh, like Marvel Action Hour and stuff they would do. Yeah. Yeah. Where so they had, I when saw you had it. back with Marvel Animation that you used to work with and doing G.I. Joe and stuff like that. Yeah. So you had yeah, a lot of same it, it voices. Was, it was like, not Sunbow. What was it called? It was like something like that. It had that sun. It would go around and like Sunbow or something like that. And I can't remember the name of the studio. I'm sorry. I can't remember. Yeah, but no, this was the but, Marvel, the old Marvel Animation Studios that had brought you yeah. Spider-Man and his amazing friends. They yes. animated G.I. Joe, yeah. Transformers. I remember it so well, awesome. and and I remember, and I enjoyed it. I so then that was, of course, the, the we're first, talking Pride of the X Men there. Yes, that's it. Yeah. That's it. And I remember watching that, and I already liked them because they had toys around that same time that yes. kind of looked similar from the Secret Wars or whatever. Yeah, the and, Toy Biz and toy line. I was I was so foolish though. Cause I say foolish, ignorant. I didn't know a lot about Wolverine. Mm-hmm. I'd seen his pictures at this place we used to go to called Pack Rat, and. Yeah. Uh, Paperback rat, yeah, actually. Paperback rat. And I used to buy your comics. And I used to, and I saw posters of Wolverine. And I just fell in love with the character because he looked so cool. But I thought because the way the toy was, you could take the claws off. Mm. And I thought, well, maybe his claws can go on his feet. Uh, <laughs> so I, <laughs> but I was wrong, of course. Yeah. I so I saw the cartoon. And I realized who who it was and what he did. And and but man, when that cartoon came on that Halloween, and we you recorded it and we watched it again and again and again and again. And it was only one part. Yeah, the first it, part it, it of Night of the one, Sentinels. So we watched it like I think you recorded it on a video you already had or whatever. And we watched it again and again. And yeah, I and then I missed the second episode and I didn't yes, get it recorded. So I had to I borrow. Recorded it. I had to borrow from your VHS and I put mine back in order and yeah. Yes. And, and we would do that VHS every week, like for like three seasons. I we did that know. with with X Men and Spider-Man. Batman for years. Spider Man, mm-hmm. yes, but I had. To, I, I fell I had in love Spider-Man. with. I fell in love with with Gambit because I had never. I didn't know who he was. In fact, I collect. I start collecting the X Men, the comic book, and I still have the first issue that Gambit ever showed up in. Oh and, yeah, um, that's valuable now if you take good care. Yeah, of it. I have that, and uh, and it's. I got that when I was in. You know, I was in high school. I was a a, a junior, and. uh I love X Men. So my very favorite is Gambit, and I love Cyclops and Wolverine, and and I gotta be honest. Uh, one thing I loved, well, I'll get to the new show in a minute with you, yeah. but I love to see Cyclops being Cyclops again because I haven't seen that in years. Yeah, because <laughs> of the way they did it in the movies, I yeah, feel like we've missed out on Cyclops for years. Yeah, it, yeah. look, I love Wolverine, but sometimes there's too much Wolverine, and yeah. I'm not the other characters. Yeah. Well, the, the the funny part about this, okay, so of course I grew up. You know, we'd watch Spider Man and his amazing friends. We were watching Super Friends. Of course, you had Superman movies. Yeah. Was, I remember, you know, the Batman 60s series come on. So I knew some of the yeah. basics before I started reading any sure. comics. I remember the first time I saw Wolverine, it was, I think, the fifth grade. And uh, the, the guy sitting in front and to the left of me was reading the first solo Wolverine comic, his first limited series. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I saw the, the artwork where here's this guy. I mean, in the in the era of Freddy Krueger, I believe. Oh, oh yeah. There's yeah. this guy with these blades coming out of his hands, standing on a pile of bodies. And I Ooh, asked him, "What I is this? Some one. kind of a villain guy?" He's like, "That's Wolverine. He's my hero." So I was like, "That's a hero. Heroes aren't supposed to kill." You know, yeah. this guy's killed. He's, cool, he's on a pile of bodies. So, but I didn't know about the Punisher at the time either. So, uh, but like the awesome. second time that I got a good encounter with the X Men was the six-player arcade game when I was freshman year in high school and I was on a bowling league and they had the six-player X-Men out in the, the arcade part of it. And I was like, oh, because I'd heard of them. And I knew, I'd knew i heard more about I'd heard about the Pride of the X-Men cartoon because everybody was talking about it at school, but I really wasn't familiar with any more than Wolverine. Yeah. Uh, but then seeing all these other characters, I'm like, oh, look, these are kind of cool. And then I think it was that very day, it was a Saturday that uh, my uh, neighbors... You know, that I used to play with and everything, you know, when we were kids, I actually had gotten some trading cards of X Men. And we were kind of going through and reading about the characters and all this, like, oh, this is really, really cool. And because I, for most of the time, if I was going to read a comic, I had to borrow it from somebody. I borrowed a lot from oh, you sure, so sure. I could read stuff because oh, I yeah. never had <laughs> spending money for anything. Um, I, until I until I earned my own spending money, and the very first comic I bought was a, an issue of Amazing Spider-Man that was Mark Bagley art, which I now have signed because it was important to me to have that one when Mark Bagley played a, came to Planet Comic Con uh, a couple years back. I wanted that one signed. I told him it's like this is the very first comic I bought with my own money, 
and I loved the artwork on it. And it's, it was your work and you've been my favorite Spider-Man artist. And so I had him sign it for me. So I have it signed my very first comic that I bought with my own money. So, but yeah, so I started reading actually the X-Men before I'd gotten to see the, the animated series. So I was, I was familiar with a lot of stuff. I started diving in and, but you know, just buying and reading X-Men. I was mainly X-Men and Spider-Man. And my, my sister had actually gotten me for my birthday, a subscription to uncanny X-Men. So I was getting that one to the other, the other title of just regular X-Men. I had to go and buy on my, on my own. And there was a gas station we could walk to that I could get stuff. So that's where most of my money, when I started yeah, doing some work. As, and when they did that, when they started the X-Men, I, I remember it confused me because I was used to what they called uncanny X-Men, which yeah. was the original X-Men. And they just added the uncanny in there, which, you know, it's a very much a Sam Lee thing. A Sam mm-hmm. Lee, I mean, it's, yeah. The Incredible and, and Hulk, was, the uh, Amazing Spider-Man, the uncanny X-Men. Yeah, um, I forgot what Daredevil. It, that was when I was Daredevil a teenager. Was just the man without fear. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, and but I remember when they was doing all that, and my brother-in-law, who he became my brother-in-law when I was, uh, just turned eleven, but I've known him since I was like eight or nine. He's the one who started showing me a lot of those characters, so I knew Colossus, I knew Nightcrawler, I knew all of them, and uh, he made these little bitty, uh, these little bitty die-cast metal figures of them when I was like nine maybe ten so i knew who a lot of them were and i enjoyed them every time i go over to his house he let me read a lot of them and i started reading a bunch of them so whenever i find then then the pride of the x-men came on so that's how i knew a lot of those characters so by the time they finally and then i started collecting those cards so i would yeah. you remember I'd collect I those I cards and we get to learn cards. a lot about them oh yeah you had a good collection of oh, the yeah. cards back then yes too, i had a good yeah, collection and, and i've so lost a bunch learn. of them but you can learn a lot about yeah. the characters just yeah. by even, all these Marvel characters. Like, oh, this one must be a really great guy or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, and boy, and the really well, ones fun because you know me with me and redheads that the Jean Grey X Men. Oh, I remember. Oh my goodness! So I was oh, she's I was the an original. fan of Jean Grey, but uh, yeah, I'm, I liked her, and I'm always drawn. I actually, I was always a rogue girl. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, rogue guy because I, she's Southern, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and I've always been more drawn to, and I'm maybe I'm boring for this. But I've always been drawn to more of the Boy Scout responsible type of characters. I look up to me them too, like, actually, like Superman. And you and I are both fans yeah. of Leonardo the Turtle. Yeah, and, he's and always then, my guy. So Cyclops, when I started getting more familiar with him from reading in the comics and then seeing him in the MA series, became Cyclops has been my number one guy. They've messed with Cyclops, was, and that's all. It took me a while to like that first X Men movie because they made him kind of lame. Because Wolverine, let's face yeah. it, Wolverine's a jerk. He really is. Well, the. Th- the thing is, is Cyclops was the main character for the first 25 yeah. or so years. And and he, he still was pretty much bringing all the people in, the new characters in, yeah. in the 70s, 75, 76. Yeah, the giant I think 75. Yeah. Yeah. There's I think it was 75. The there in that, that issue. I mean, that was the year before I was born. That was the year of Jaws, <laughs> I always call it, because <laughs> that, that changed movies, you know? Yeah. So the year of Jaws was the year they brought them all in. And, uh, and so you think about, how Cyclops was the one, I mean, on that issue, that's the only really original, I I believe the only original character of the series is still coming out. And the giant size X-Men, it was Cyclops and he had to get, he he had to save all the other X-Men and they needed a new team. So that's when he got Storm and Nightcrawler, Wolverine and, uh, Colossus in. And they went and go save the, uh, the original team X-Men. And that, that's what launched it because apparently it wasn't successful up until that point. So, yeah, it was, it was kind of just, uh, We'll say a B lister, yeah, maybe a mediocre, and I still liked it. I've read a lot of it, but Beast wasn't the Beast that we know. He was just yeah. kind of a, he had big feet yeah. and big hands, kind of weird, weird he had, he ape-like did. body structure. He did have yeah, the long that arms was it. and stuff, you know. But. And, and then when he, he didn't become hairy till later, and then it was gray hair at that. At, yeah, at the when he tried to cure himself. <laughs> yeah. And I loved it because Beast is I love Beast. I think, yeah. and I gotta say, Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey Grammer oh, yeah. was the best of, of casting for him because he was so perfect. He really was perfect personality, perfect because uh, he's very kind, very gentle, and yet very intelligent. And yet, when he gets mad, I could see that. I could see he was perfect. <laughs> yep. Anyway, uh, but the uh, the cartoon the the first season or so, I think it was just the first season, but we got no beast for the longest time because he was he locked, was locked up. up. <laughs> and I was, and like, I was like, where's my beast? I want some beast. And, when they, yeah. and then Toy Biz at the time, 
made the toys. Yes. And it was so good. I buy them all. And but I'm yeah, saved you had up because I quite the collection. Well, I was working at the time. Yeah. I just started working, and at McDonald's. But I was, and I was also babysitting, so I yeah. was uh, saving them up and getting them. And I still got no. I gave most of them away now, but uh, I was bad collector. No, I'm kidding. But I was getting them, and I loved the Beast. There was something about him. That's when toys started really starting to look like the cartoon. Yeah. And I loved the holding Beast because he just felt like the cartoon. He looked like him, you know. And I just loved that. It was so much fun. But Gambit yeah. became my favorite. Because he had this kind of a, a southern gentleman. I got a little bit southern in me, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I love that. Most there. There. Yeah. Well, some of my family was from Tennessee and all that. So down, down in that area. And so I, I loved that. I thought that he was cool. Plus, I didn't know he was. I loved or something about the black eyes yeah. with the red. The I just red thought pupils. that was so that was so cool. And I'm also an artist. So yeah. that was like, that was so unique. Yeah, he and always I, had that really a cool stood look. out. There. Yeah. And I like, and I had, you know, not for real, for real, but I kind of had a crush on Rogue as far as the girl characters go. <laughs> you can she's look, but you don't too. touch. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Exactly. But that, I think that was also kind of the cool thing. I still never understood why they didn't just put a collar on her. So because that, you know, that would make it too easy. And and plus, if you repress her mutant power, she probably would have lost all of the other powers though that she needed too. Because having the bar talking. from Ms. Marvel taking those away too, then she's useless. No, but I'm you can take it on and pull it off. I know. To kiss. I'm just talking about the kiss or whatever. I know. You know the... I know. And I think we talked about this, but I'm trying to make excuses for them. Come on. You know. But, yeah. <laughs> she yeah. could have just put a collar on and fixed everything. Uh, yeah. Now, apparently in the comics, they did for a while. She lost her powers and her and Gambit were able to go off on their own for a while. And then, you know. Um, and uh, there is something we'll talk about when we get to the 97 that I'm kind of curious about that I, I, I don't know much about. But uh, I do want to get into like the animated series. What was great about it, they pulled a lot of reference from the work of the the greatest X-Men writer, Chris Claremont. Yeah, uh, great Which one. I got to sit in a panel with him and hear him to talk about the X-Men. Uh, I will be sharing that audio after I edit because, you know, he did. He didn't cuss much, but you near know, a little bit. So I'm going to well, yeah. try to get that yeah. out. But he had a lot of interesting things to say. Uh, and he's probably come up with some of the greatest stuff, like the Phoenix Saga, the Dark Phoenix Saga. Oh, yeah, that was great. And, I mean, you know, we really got to see, what by the time we got to the third season, we had the Phoenix Saga. And I remember that was a mini series that was going on in the morning before I went had to go to school. And I just I was glued to every episode of that. And then they did the Dark Phoenix Saga, and I was just soaked it up. And I do have, a, uh, I guess, a trade paperback of the Dark Phoenix Saga which is great read. I want to get like the Phoenix saga on a trade paperback or something, get some sort of collection. Uh, but I, I, that's part of what made the X-Men series work real. Uh, Cause you'd already had Batman, the animated series that showed like, Hey, we can make a show that adults will, will enjoy and we can be serious enough about it and take the story seriously and not be corny and, sh- and silly. And cr- that's going to referencing the Chris Claremont where he was writing for a more understandable, where they were more complex. And so you had deep characters that had, you know, full personalities and they had story arcs and stuff that would happen to them personally. Uh, you, you know, we could dive into rogues um, not being able to have human contact and what that's like. Uh, and, you know, we, we could dive into their emotional beings. And so they were fleshed out. So uh, as old as we were, we could still enjoy this cartoon. Kids were able to enjoy it. Us teenagers were able to enjoy it. And, it, it just made that series great. And of course, with the success for that, they realized, Hey, let's bring Spider-Man back to the animated. And so we got like one of the best Spider-Man animated series that's been done bar none. Uh, it's, I still love that series. Absolutely. It's a great one. Mm-hmm. See, and I think the brilliance of that cartoon X-Men and, and Spider-Man, the brilliance of it now at the same time, and it's probably my favorite cartoon ever made as far as the series goes. And it's definitely my favorite version of the character, but uh, Batman, the animated yeah. series that come out. That's definitely the brilliant. best version of Batman you'll ever see. Oh, it ever. And it's my Other favorite animated graphics, series. But yeah, that's, that's a fantastic well, yeah, animated it's series. My, it's, my, it's my favorite because it takes a combination of things. It, that's what's so brilliant sometimes is you go back later and you take the best of this and the best of that. In the beginning, they had a little bit. Well, I'm getting off subject. Anyway, the point was. X-Men. X-Men. <laughs> X-Men. The point was, uh, w- what they did with the X Men and Spider Man was they were able to take stories that worked mm-hmm. from the comic book and said, okay, we're going to have to, I don't want to use the phrase dumb it down, but we're going to have to put it into a series. We can't use everything that was in the yeah. comic. 
partially because we don't have all the characters. We don't have Shadow Cat. We don't have this. We don't have that. But sometimes what they would do that was brilliant was they had special guest stars like yeah. uh, Colossus or whatever. Yeah, and, I and we'll use them in this. Once. Yeah. And we, we can use them, but sometimes they couldn't because they were just guest stars and they yeah. couldn't use them. And other times they could. So they're very smart that way. But yeah, they had to change a few little things around, but not enough to where it really, I don't think, at least ruined it. Yeah. For some, though, you know, who are, you know, I don't know what the right phrase is, a, a little bit of a perfectionist. <laughs> They're like, oh, but it wasn't the same because Shadow Cat wasn't in there. I'm just using her as an yeah, example. Yeah, we used Jubilee but, instead. Yeah. But that makes sense. I mean, Shadow Cat was off in Excalibur in the comics at the yeah, time, so she wasn't part right. of the X Men. So, you know, having at least uh, somebody to take Shadow Cat's place you know in and of course jubilee or a sprite yeah. as as kitty was known back in the day no and that's have, right that's right jubilee in there kind of to take her position but yet be of course her own distinct personality kind mm, of helped right. because it was a good transition if you uh if you enjoyed the cartoon and you wanted to read the comics you were going to find jubilee and all the characters you knew from the cartoon were there plus some extra ones that, uh, that first time I saw Jubilee, I thought she looked a lot like Robin because the first picture I saw, this is on Wizard Magazine when I first bought Wizard Magazine, it just came out. And uh, the lighting that they had for Jubilee, her shorts looked kind of greenish, <laughs> even though they were actually blue. Yeah, they looked kind of greenish, and she's wearing the red top and she had like that yellow jacket. Yeah. And, and I was like, you know, and, and, and also the glasses, glasses. So like a mask. Yeah. And they look kind of greenish from that picture. And I was like, is it a Robin girl? <laughs> yeah, like, it, I knew it wasn't the same character. Frank Miller but, had I mean, done that girl uh, Robin but, in the uh, the Dark Knight Returns yeah. that had a similar yeah, look. I, I knew it wasn't the same company, but I thought, hi, huh, she looks Robin-ish. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't thought of that yeah. about that, but yeah, you're right. She's very Robin-ish. <laughs> yeah. Well, Which is a new, new phrase, Robin-ish. <laughs> Robin-ish. As Batman's kind of Wolverine-ish, except for Wolverine will kill. <laughs> Now, the, the, you remember that? Oh, now that takes you to a whole other conversation we ought to do sometime. Remember the uh, oh amalgam when they had the dark? Oh. So I remember them doing it, but I, I don't think I ever collected any of it. Dark claws. Yeah, I have them. Some yeah, of them. You I had fun with that. You started making your own amalgam. Oh, stuff like that. Whole bunch of... all kinds of mixtures. You yeah, were having a, a lot, lot of fun with that. Oh, I had a blast. Mm-hmm. I had Iron Man and Batman together. That was a lot of fun. Mm. And that, that actually makes a lot, lot of sense of too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I thought rich man yep. and rich man, you know, and, rich man and it was a lot of fun. There you go. I had him. I had him in an Iron Man, Batman type thing. I can't think of the name of it right now. I don't know if it was Iron Wings, I think, or something. But I don't remember what it was. <laughs> but it was. It was a lot of fun. The Iron Bat. <laughs> yeah, it might have been that. that I, just, I cool can't thing. remember. Yeah. I have it written down still. I have drawn. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, so we really, of course, enjoyed the heck out of that series. Now, I uh, oh, yeah. I don't think I was watching it by the time we got to a fifth season, and I own most I of this either. on DVD. I can't find volume four, but volume five is still available on the uh, the Disney Movie Club. But I can't find volume four anywhere. Uh, I don't know if I run season five because it was a different animation company and the stories weren't as good. Yeah, I know enough of what happened to get into X Men ninety seven, uh, where, and, where and they have it Xavier, on, uh, on was, Disney Plus, don't they? Huh. Uh, yeah, Disney? Disney Plus has got a few episodes out of order, but that's okay. But you can watch it all on Disney Plus. But I like to own physical media. Yeah, myself. me too. You're, you're you're nerdy like me. <laughs> I want I want the entire Spider-Man animated series as a full yes. nice legal copy. But until then, I have my own methods that I do have the entire series on DVD <laughs> that I made myself. But uh, for the longest time, that was the only way I was ever going to watch him again. But now, of course, you you yeah. can watch it on on Disney Plus, which I appreciate. So, but. So now we get into X-Men 97, and we've got, well, Charles yes. Xavier had uh, an, an attempted assassination that made his powers go kind of out of control, uh, where he's actually was taken away by the Shi'ar to try to take care of it, but they are treating him like he's dead. They don't know that they're ever going to get him back. I suspect we are going to get him back sometime in this new series. I was going to uh, ask. I was going to ask because I, I didn't know. I thought, well, maybe it was on the old series, and I didn't yeah, see that it, part. It, it I really ha- don't it was know. the final episode of the original series is, is where all that happened. And it's one of the few oh. episodes, I guess, of that of the fifth season you you do kind of need to watch. I mean, they I think they did maybe it was season four where they did the Age of Apocalypse for a little bit. Mm, yeah, I remember that. that. Um, so I mean, that was kind of a big deal. But season five, the only things I remember is that episode, and then also Jubilee getting 
which actually was based off of a comic, Jubilee getting lost somewhere with a bunch of kids and an earthquake, and they're in caves that they're exploring, and she tells them this fairy tale story with the X-Men characters, which is based off of something that actually happened during Chris Claremont's time, oh, except cool. for it was Kitty Pride That's doing cool. it. So they did sure. do that. Um, hey, guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. But with X Men 97, uh, I, what I did appreciate is we see some recognizable stories. Uh, now I don't know if they're going to go full on House of M. House of M. I had to uh, I had to look this and look this back up. Uh, House of M. Actually had some stuff that had happened in a previous uh, or, or like a different timeline. But what you see Magneto wearing with the big M in the second it. episode is the same that you see in House of M. So I, I see them once again. I I had been concerned considering the showrunner uh, is part of the. A certain group that has an agenda. We'll put it like that. Uh, I was afraid he was going to insert his agenda far into this series. And I've expressed these concerns before and we weren't going to get good stories. Uh, but they're still pulling story material from the comics. So we see a little bit of House of M. Uh, we're, we're seeing a little and I don't want to spoil anything. I'm hoping you all have seen these two episodes or you're kind of th- thinking about whether you're going to watch it. We're going to have a bits of Inferno and Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen. Uh, apparently, that we're, we're working that storyline in here as well. So they're still pulling from Chris Claremont. So we're going to get some good X Men stories from what we're what we're seeing. The only bit that I did see, and this was some people had concerns on this, that Morph uh, they made it where his regular face is featureless, and the ending credits. Uh, like they're trying to rep- replicate the ending credits. We really didn't get to see when it, when it was being shown on Fox kids. But if you watch in Disney plus the end credits had where they had like a 3d version of each character and it would go and say in the list their powers, you know, and they would all yeah. pull up and they did a version of that for the ending. And you will note that morph is their powers. He's, he's they them and he's pronoun. Oh, uh, that so far is the only thing where I see an agenda probably being worked in because they did talk about more if they decided it was going to be, um, kind of gender fluid because he's whatever he turns himself into instead of the fact that he was born male and he just kind of shifts his form, but he was still born a male, but this is kind of the new thing they've done in even the X-Men comics because the comics are now way off in a, in an agenda yeah. that Stan Lee had never actually intended. And I have learned, I mean, I think I did talk about like, there was a, a racism element going on that during the 60s, it kind of fit with that. But I have seen interviews where Stan Lee said he never really intentioned that. He just wanted to, he ran out of ideas for people to have their powers. And he thought, well, what if they were just born with it? And he just kind of went from there. So he didn't really intend for everything special. What's going on now? Uh, it has been taken over by certain groups with their agenda and they're, they're relating it. And they've changed what the X-Men are. And Chris Claremont even lamented that, Death means nothing now in X Men because if you die, they have machines on Genosha that just bring you right back and r- make you a new body. So it means nothing. And Chris Claremont even said, "Like I'm the guy who killed Jean Grey, and I meant for her to stay that way." So it's he, wow. he's, he's lamented what they've done in a lot of other ways with the characters. But this, of course, uh, this X Men '97, and I was like, okay, I want to be fair. Uh, and I, I will say I did enjoy both of those episodes they released last week, and I'm looking forward to see what they do next week. But what or this week on Wednesday they'll release another episode. But I am worried sometimes when they pull that nostalgia of a show we used to like or some sort of franchise that we have liked when we were kids, and they bring it back, they'll give you a couple episodes, and you're like, oh hey, those were good. And then that third episode is wham, here's the agenda that. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, as a man of God, I cannot get behind that agenda. Yeah. I mean, God loves everybody, but he do- you don't stay the same. I'm not the same person I was after my encounter with Christ. He's changed Amen. me. And, and you can love someone and don't have to agree with them either. Right. I don't have to agree with you, but that doesn't mean I don't love you. And because right. I got, you know, I got sin in my life. You got sin in your life, whoever you are. You got your own sin. And I won't agree with your sin. But if you're making that your main thing, I'm going to say, man. You're you're going you you don't realize it, but you're in a path of destruction, and God loves you enough to get you out of it. 
if you give him a it chance. Is. He transforms people. But okay, but that's you know besides the point. But I you know I'm allowed. I feel like I get to say that kind of thing because as what I was saying earlier. But overall, that's I right. will say I did enjoy these episodes, <laughs> and I got excited at the, the the stories that they're bringing up. But one thing that and we kind of almost got it there with Rogue. It seems she can touch Magneto without a problem. So I'm I'm yeah. wondering. Now, Magneto has always bragged about electricity and magnetism being related, and so electricity doesn't have an effect on him, so Storm can strike him with lightning, and he don't care. And I wonder if Rogue's powers are somehow, in a weird way, because it's energy-based, she feeds electricity, but maybe that, or not, well, I just use electricity, but I was meaning to say electricity, but because of that energy basis, I wonder if that's, like, electrical in her own way, to where that's why she's not having an effect on Magneto. And I'm looking to see where this goes because in the in the comics in the '90s, the when they other than Uncanny when they started the regular X Men line with Jim Lee's brilliant art, that was kind mm-hmm. of a thing that Magneto has at times tried to live up to Xavier's dream and tried to fight for it. He's kind of gone back and forth, but he and Rogue did strike up a pretty good friendship. And she did kind of care about him. We don't know to what extent I mean, is going to happen in the animated series. You know, it seems like there's a past maybe before that that I, I, I'm interested to see them explore. And there might be something. Well, she comics. was a villain for a while. Yeah, she uh, was. Yeah, with with uh, with uh, Mystique there. So I, I'm, I'm interested to see where they're going to go with this. Uh, and because it seems like she's able to touch Magneto and it's not harming him. So I'm curious what they're doing with that. And then also at the very, and I hope, I hope I'm not spoiling this, but where after we see the birth and although they called him Nathan Charles Summers instead of Nathan Christopher Summers, we saw the birth of Cable. And I was like, that's interesting because Cable's mother was actually Madeline Pryor. And then knock, knock, knock. Here's Jean Grey. I'm looking for the X-Men. The real Jean Grey has just stepped up. And yeah. Uh, so I'm like, oh, we're going to do it. The Goblin Queen, the Inferno, it's going to happen. And I'm not that familiar with some of the story. I think I did uh, pull some notes up uh, on some of the stuff with the Inferno uh, storyline. Uh, there's a bit of a complicated thing. With like a, This was a ba- main Marvel thing, but uh, I want to just you know grab a couple of paragraphs, but say, meanwhile, Nasturth, and who's one of these demons who's, who's causing troubles in Manhattan, made a bargain with Madeline Pryor, agreeing to locate her son Nathan and manipulate the X-Men into killing the Marauders in exchange for her casting a spell that would make a permanent bridge between Earth and Limbo. So there's a lot of big, full Marvel Universe stuff that goes on in this, but uh, it basically, uh, Nathan... In the fulfillment of the other half of the bargain, Nastirth liberates Nathan from Mr. Sinister's, la- Mr. Sinister's laboratory, where Madeline learns that she is, in fact, a clone of Jean Grey created by Sinister. And who wouldn't love to see Mr. Sinister come back to the animated series? Ah, uh, so yes. Th- I'm expecting to see a lot of this happen and her become a full villain. Because, you know, Sinister wanted to get the offspring of Jean and Cyclops. Mm-hmm. That's right. And that's what he has gotten by making a clone of Gene and you know, there you go. He's got the child that he wants. And, and I'm hoping we get to see how Nathan has to be sent to the future where, cause I, I, he, I can't remember if he had like an illness or something, but he had to get sent to the future and that's where he come. He becomes cable in the future. And I've actually got uh, the comics. I really enjoyed this. Uh, they, after, after Gene and, and Scott got married, they had the adventures of Cyclops and Phoenix where they get, pulled into the future and they got to raise cable in the during an age where apocalypse yeah. rules the world. It was a great storyline where they got to have their son back. Well, his son, but kind of genes yeah. too, because it was her genetics, you know, it's just, she didn't get to give birth to him, but so yeah, it was genius. really neat. <laughs> and I'm hoping maybe we get some of that. Uh, we could get a lot of cable backstory <coughs> and, you know, with, in the original series cable, there's like one moment where he's, he's trying to research the X-Men and he says, well, I know about him and Jean gray. But he never tells yeah. them that, oh, by the way, I'm your son. Because he doesn't want to, like, okay, this is in their future. They don't know about me. But I'm wondering if at, this, at some point Cable will pop up into this new series and be able to say, hi, Dad. <laughs> I always thought that it was a, a Terminator type yeah, in story. A way. It, it, now, one thing you was talking about, uh, Morph. And his face, his his uh, Voldemort face. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, yeah that that is... But that has become a thing, like with those who can change shape and all, because Chameleon's the same way. Yo. And also, it, DC, and I can't remember his, his name, 
But well, in DC, the they have though, a character. wearing a mask, though. Well, in DC, they do the same thing. I don't remember the character's name, but I bought an Alfred figure. And Alfred, and I really don't remember the character's name at all, but Alfred, the figure, came with three Alfred faces and this chameleon looking face, like, you know, Voldemort face, basically. Mm-hmm. And so I have the little head of a, that almost exact same face of Morph and, Vol- and chameleon. And uh, it, it but also came with the uh, Alfred from the comic book. The Alfred from the uh, original TV show, which is why I bought it. And then Alfred, and I'm hoping I can find another body for this, but he has Alfred from the original 1989 movie. And I thought that is so cool. But they also came with that comedian looking face. And I thought, huh. So it seems like every time someone could change shape or whatever, or, or whatever it is, a disguise, they seem to use that almost Voldemort looking yeah, face that for some reason. face that just, ugh. Yeah. 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 It's white, always whitish or whatever. Yeah. Or at least cream color. Yeah. And no nose, and they all look the same, basically. Yeah, scary looking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we need to be able to move to Ghostbusters. But what are your thoughts on ninety yeah. seven? Did you enjoy it? Oh, I loved it. I lo- but it, the moment it started up, and you get the music and the beginnings yes. identical, except for a few little things. And the animation, and I think, is a little I, better because it's Disney animators. <laughs> oh, well, of course, I thought the same thing. They st- try to stay within the same reign, mm-hmm. and yet make their own thing yeah. and i would love to i and plus i was to hear the voices yes. most of them are the same and the i was back. so ex- yeah yeah and i was so excited because the moment i heard hey bub yeah. i was like duh, 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 that's my wolverine mm-hmm. and and then the, the don't get me wrong i love the movies i love but the most you know for the most part and then i loved but to hear hey bub and that's my guy and then and then hearing hey i'm uh Shari, and i'm like there's my guy you know even the the goofy dorky looking stuff where he's wearing the little half shirt and all that stuff i'm like <laughs> that's still that's the guy you know yeah. and then and then cyclops was very heroic. I'm like, that's the Cyclops oh, I love. Had a fantastic opening scene where Cyclops comes yes. in and starts whooping the fire out of some friends of humanity. And I, I love the moment where they're like, take his visor off. They think they've got him. Oh, we took his visor off. Oh, He's like, no. oh, no, you've taken off my visor. Whatever will I do? I guess I better surrender. And he does the thing. Not. And just opens his yeah. eyes like boom. I was like, it was, yes. It was so classic because oh. the, the thing about the old show is when I watch it, it's sometimes a little cringy at times. It, I love it, but it's sometimes cringy whenever like Rogue yells. It's sometimes overboard. Yeah. But they kind of had no it, it, the old cartoons. The, the, it is overboard, but they kind of they're trying to sell the drama of yeah. it. You know, it's almost soap opera at times. You, but you it's have the way to go it is. Overboard with animation though to get it across yes. in your voice though. Yeah. Wow. Really <laughs> yeah. Yep. The one thing I'm still waiting. I loved it. I'm waiting for an answer for why Bishop is there because he usually time travels yeah. back and forth for a reason. And having him a regular part of the X Men is great. I love that idea. But I would like to know, like, okay, well, what? Why did he come back for? And why is he staying? I want that story. That sounds like a good and story. I, I, I love the little things that they change and yet were still the same ish. Yeah. Like I, I liked how uh, Storm had a mohawk. Yet, yeah, the way they did it look. Story coming because yeah, like because she didn't really in, in the in the eighties when she got the mohawk and she changed her outfits because she had lost mm-hmm. her powers. So with she the mohawk, the I was like, the... well, that's kind of a different look. That's the look she had when she started just wearing all black and she wasn't wearing the capes because she had lost her powers. Yeah, so she then, had like a sleeveless shirt. Yeah, yeah. So now that she's lost her powers, I'm like, oh, I see, we're going that way. Yeah, we are. Yeah. So I'm excited to see you where because I, I can't remember how she got her powers back. I've read some of the issues where she lost her powers and she had to deal with that. But yeah. I don't remember how she got her powers back. So I'm, I'm, I don't I don't remember either. I'm hoping by the end of the season she'll be back full force because I love her. She's got the coolest powers. I mean, come on. She controls. I, and the I loved hearing I loved hearing the voice. Yes. Hearing and the her voice, dramatic you know. cheesy lightning yeah, she, shall purify she, your anger. She always reminds me, you know, she always reminds me of a little bit. She always reminds me just a little bit of Uhura uh from <laughs> Star Trek. Because the way she would say stuff, she yeah. goes, Back to your place, mister. And I'm like, oh man, they always reminds me just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you back to your post. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's, oh my goodness, it's true. I hadn't thought of that. But I always loved her cheesy look. Uh, the storm mistress of the elements commands you to release her. Yeah, oh, she had some of the greatest very delivery. Theatric. But and but it yeah, made sense because this is somebody who in Africa was being revered as a goddess. So a little bit of that has yeah. uh, affected her personality. Yeah, but she's, she's got great. some of the coolest powers. It doesn't make sense for her to have that power, but it's still cool. Like I said, Wolverine, oh, man, 
the moment I, I heard him, hey, and I love when Gambit, because you know Gambit's my guy, he's my yeah. favorite. When Gambit jumps on his back and his claws are, yeah. are going pink, I'm like, yay! Although, okay, the, my <laughs> problem I together. had with that, and Heather and I had a discussion of that, when Gambit charges something, it explodes. So how can he charge I know. With his skeleton and then and this, Wolverine doesn't explode? I thought the explode. same thing. It's like, Ex- did they not look the, at yeah. how his powers work? He charges know, it with a kinetic explosive rain. energy for crying out loud. Come on. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it looks cool, but it doesn't make a lick bit of sense. So I actually thought that was stupid. As much as it looked cool, did I was you like, know. I was like, did you all do your research? He charges it up. He throws it. It's kinetic. It gets a kinetic energy and it makes it fling out there. And then it explodes upon impact. Oh, oh well. No, I don't know. But I anyways, cool, though. when there's something strange in your neighborhood, like, you know, charging up Wolverine's claws. Who are you going to call? <laughs> you have no answer for that? Ghostbusters? <laughs> yeah, there we go. I had to turn the corner because, uh, you know, trying to keep this an hour long show, we've only got sure. about 10 minutes left. <laughs> I'm looking at my Ghostbuster collection over there. <laughs> yes, indeed. And I actually have a, a, half of my Ghostbusters collection. Well, actually, more than half of my Ghostbusters collection is some of your leftovers that you've given me. So, oh, sure. And then, of course, no, I guess I have a little bit more because I have bought like behind you. I've got yeah. my real Ghostbusters, but then I've also bought. So I have eight figures I bought on my own and eight figures that you gave me. So, yes, you've literally half of my collection is from you. And the other ones are stuff I bought on my own that you can. Well, you can kind of see that on camera, my real Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. And then when they made those other ones to be more like the movie style, but yet cartoony like the real Ghostbusters, which I had to get those. I love those figures. They're really great. Those are great. So we got a chance to see, not at the same time. We got, we, we didn't no, get to go together. Yeah. I went, I brought my sister and my wife along. We got to see Frozen Empire. And uh, yeah, with that night, and I've seen it twice now because I took my nephew. Yeah. We had a good time and had fun both times, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, I did. In fact, I went ahead the other night. I, I got that little Stay Puff dude, you know, mm-hmm. that you, they have this little Stay Puff. I got the last one at the theater, at least. Yeah, I and told it was you the, had uh, to get one because I bought yeah, one. Yeah, and. And, and it was very nice. It's on your shoulders. I should be wearing they, one. They right had now. it on display up there, and I said, "You all have any more little staple?" They said, "Oh, that's the very last one." And I said, uh, "I said, okay, oh, get the anyway." My nephew liked it, and so me being the uncle that I am, I said, "Do, do you like it a lot?" He goes, "Yeah." I said, "Well, it's yours," and I gave it to because you know, you know how I am. I can't help it. That's the that's the. Uh, Uncle Santa type, you know. <laughs> there we go. So there those is. of you who are Patreon subscribers that are getting it, and, and it's a certain tier of Patreon, the ten dollar tier, uh, that gets video, will now see that I have a Stay Puft sitting on my shoulder, or a mini Stay Puft, really. Stay sitting Puft on, my shoulder. on your shoulder makes you happy. <laughs> he's magnetic, so you stuff it in your shoulder, and he his, he'll sit right there on your shirt. It's fantastic. Thank you. And I had yeah. to get it as soon as I saw it because I do love the little mini puffs, and They're they of cute. course have a great <laughs> appearance. Yeah, in the show, and uh, and I I thought it was funny. Uh, it was a good story. It was, yeah, I it loved was it. Yeah. Scary monsters. I love what they've done with Winston. I don't want to spoil too much for Me those too. who haven't seen it yet. Oh, Although sure, it made like forty something million here in I the, saw in the that, states. Man. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of people went to go see this uh, because Afterlife was a good movie, and this was a good. Now the criticisms I see, and I'm going to address these, and I, sure. one of them I kind of agree with. Uh, Dave Cullen, who's this Irish guy who does really, I think, really good reviews on YouTube. He 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 was bored, and he said part of it is some of the humor style is is missing or different, and, and that there's not that weird playfulness and charm that the original cast had. But I think part of it is this this is written by different people other than Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, and Harold Ramis has a certain style of humor that comes across yeah. in every movie where he's written on, like even on Grand Hunt Day. And there is a certain playfulness to his humor and his yeah. style is missing from the humor of these last two movies. Not to say that these movies don't have some funny, no, and some no, good and humor, good, but, but it, it really doesn't feel the same. So I have to agree with him on that, but I still enjoyed it. And I still laughed, especially at the, uh, the mini puffs. I love the mini puffs uh, yeah, and their slapstickness. Cute. Uh, the other major criticism, and this is, uh, almost the elephant in the room. And my wife and I have both said, like, we were concerned that, and I, this might be almost a little spoilery, but Phoebe makes a friend who is a ghost. And, and she was worried, like, I hope they're not going to imply that there's more to this than the, just a friendship. And after seeing some interviews with a, a, a teenager interviewing uh, McKenna Grace, I think that's her name, uh, who plays Phoebe. It's like, oh, I just love the crush that Phoebe has on this ghost. And there are people who, on both sides of it, whether they think it's a, a woke thing and it's bad or 
or the people who are encouraging it who are trying to imply that there's some sort of romanticness between her and this ghost, but there's nothing in the movie to me that really implied anything romantic. It just seemed no. like a unusual friendship with a, a young human girl who's kind of awkward and has a hard time making friends, but she can kind of relate because she's going through some growing pains. And I like that Phoebe did have a growth uh, in her character because you see her you know, at 15 hitting that rebellious bit of teenagers and you don't want to listen to your parents and all this stuff. But by the end, even though she's called her mother by her first name, she, at the end, it's Ooh. mama, it's mother, mom again. She grew yeah. and she learned that her parents are watching out for her and maybe she can listen to them. Uh, so she does have a character arc that I did appreciate. And part of it is making mistakes along the way with her new friend. And she, and she But she finds that she can relate to this 16-year-old girl ghost because of the, the awkwardness of their situation and being about the same age, they can kind of relate. And I saw that as a friendship, but I, but... When, when it started up, I was like, I have a bad feeling this friendship is going to be somehow bad for with the villain yeah. involved. And I was right. That's I don't want to say too, too much because yeah. I don't want to spoil the movie. I want to be very careful. <clears throat> but I only saw this as a friendship, but a lot of people are trying to make more of it. And I don't know that it was the filmmaker's intention to have more of it, but hmm. I have to address that it is in there. But to me, the, she was just made a new friend and it seemed like a friendship to me. And I was worried I they were going if, to take it further, but it didn't feel to me that they did could take it. Any further I, I think if a, a, it's all on the viewer, if, a, if, yeah. a, if you want it to be that way, that's up to you. If uh, you don't, you won't. But uh, as far as the actress, she's a good actress, but mm -hmm. the problem is, and this is not her fault, but uh, it's her age uh, and the generation she's grown up with, by the way, I'm not trying to tell anyone. I'm really not, but uh, they're ignorant and ignorant means uh, uneducated in yeah. the fact they don't know any better, right. uh, meaning th this way that they're being raised, not even talking about by their parents necessarily, but by the generation is that that's the cool, popular, and, and they think natural thing, which it's not, but not they think bad. it is. And so I, I you know, I, I understand it, but there's really nothing in the film to imply that at all. In right. fact, if anything, you, you see that what it was a, a manipulation. I'm talking about from the other character. Yeah. I won't go into it, yeah. but I will say there's a manipulation and that happens. I had that in my, in my life it, uh, where there be people who you think are your friend. Yeah. And they, you realize that they're trying to manipulate you. And, but when you're brought up, you know, as the Bible says, bring up in the way they should go and then it will not depart from them. That's the way, thank God for my father and my mother, because they taught me right from wrong. And so when I had people trying to manipulate me and turn me away, I turned right back as a new, yeah. and it was that very age, 15, 15, 16. Yeah. yeah tur turn me right back. That's that age. We all, that's we all how, have to deal that's with why it felt teenager. right. Yeah. Yeah, that's why in the movie it felt right to me because it's like, and she is a good actress. Yeah, one thing she did at the very beginning of the movie that I don't know why it was so weird, it, but she's so good at it. it. Was she does this weird joke wink thing? Yes, I, I don't love know the what wink, it is about that wink. Her wink is even it's, somehow it's so, awkward. Where like the whole eyelid seems to come down. Yeah. I love it. It's it, it, me I don't know how. I don't know. How, she's great though. She's yeah. so good as an actress. I really yeah. like her. Because uh, that's one of the criticisms. This is like, oh, they just completely didn't like Phoebe because she was just odd, and they were afraid she was turning a girl boss. Like, no, she wasn't. She was being a fifteen-year-old girl, but she learns a lesson. And she's lovable. Yeah, and yeah, and she's lovable. I think probably what helped is I watched Afterlife again the night before, and you yeah. know, loved learned to love Phoebe and all the other new characters. Other well, podcast is kind of annoying in the first one. I don't like his equipment because. Being a podcasting for eleven years, I know his equipment is not accurate for what anybody uses. He's yeah. got film equipment, not podcasting. I need to watch equipment. that movie again. But but now, even but without watching the movie again, Phoebe, I was prepared for Phoebe, and I already was. They had already endured themselves again to me, so I was like, "Oh, that's Phoebe." But I was like, "Ooh, wow, she got a rebellious streak." But I was like, "She's fifteen. That makes sense. She's going to be that way." But I love the I love the growth that even Paul Rudd's character, Mister Gruberson. Gets because he's learning to try to be. Uh, they they don't really say if they you know if he's married and he's their real stepfather. I don't think that he's supposed to be. But maybe I don't think they're is. married yet. Yeah, I, but he's trying I think to just. He's trying to be the father dating. figure, and he has a moment where he's he's got to quit being their friend and be a father. And I love when he yeah. he steps up, has to be a father, and then she goes over to the mother goes over to him is like I know it hurts, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's like I understand things, that yeah, awful. you can't be their friend, and sometimes you have to put your foot down. And I mean, and yeah, I, I've, I've never raised a kid, but I've been around kids and I've had to put my foot down and you love the kids it's like, yeah, I hate to have to do this, but I have to be the authority because I've driven a school bus, you know, but you have to be the authority figure and the kids need that. 
And the, as they get older, they will appreciate you for putting that authority because you, what are you doing with that authority? As they were talking in the movie and even what he has to tell us, so you realize everything we're doing is because we're trying to protect you. And, uh, and, and it's, you know, I'm trying not to be spoiler again, but when Phoebe has that realization that they're there for, and when Phoebe's coming back and she's, she's figured out what it's going to take to defeat the monster, she's still kind of struggling with it. And then her mother comes alongside and helps her. And the way she kind of wraps her arm, kind of like the way Grandpa Egon does with, with that moment mm-hmm. when the mother comes along and helps her. I was like, there it is. I mean, that's I, I, it's like it teaches like teaching ch- the teenagers. Your parents are there for you. They love you. They're looking out for you and they are going to help you and support you. And I I loved it. And I felt like there was a lot of good character growth. And that's what movies need. Good character growth. Good I love stories. Scary monsters is a good thing that they get to fight. But what uh. what I love, too, was it was to me. And now I, I love the first one more than others, but the, original the other classic. three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But the the other three, I give a B, B plus, whatever. The B plus, probably all of them. Uh, but what I love about this one is it had such a, a feel of the original. It, yeah, it had back the in New York. Uh, back in New York mm-hmm. and the music. There was a lot of the original music, yeah. and and there's I'm not going to say who, but there's a couple guest appearances from characters we hadn't seen since the first one, just a couple little ones here and there. But I was like, yeah. hey, hey, the, hey, the one guy you, says, like you. a couple minutes, but I recognized him. Like, yeah, what was I was that like, got to do you. with it? Yeah, I was like, hey, dude, like, yeah, that guy. Oh, I loved goodness. it. Yeah, it was it's so much fun, and it was just oh, I loved it. Yeah. The uh, like I said, it made me feel like I was a kid again seeing mm-hmm. it and. Uh, I was like, oh, that's great. And Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was just so much fun. I I enjoyed it. I I tell you who I wish would come back at least one more time. I wish they could make. uh, Yes, (laughs) I wish. I know Sigourney made an appearance last time at the very end. Dana can be a regular character. But I want to see. Yeah, I want to see her. And I want so badly to see Rick Moranis. Just one appearance. That's all. That's all I'm asking for. One appearance. Rick, we love you. (laughs) I wanted to see if Louis Tully had actually had married uh, Janine. You know how that relationship yeah. ended up. That would have been I fun. I wanted to see it. I wanted I, to see it. Maybe next time. I love. I love Lewis. I love Lewis. Because oh, if you stayed <laughs> for a there's a mid credit scene. I have read mm-hmm. it and it's confirmed that they were hinting that they're not done with Mini Puffs and there is another movie. They have a plan to have some story with the Mini Puffs of what they're really go, what's going on with them, and another movie. So we have a chance. Maybe Rick Moranis will get the call and he'll say, "Sure, okay." Oh. I mean, I'm sure he's raised his children by now. So oh, maybe yeah, he they're over now. Maybe has some time to come and do it. We, you know, I think I think Rick Moranis knows how many people love him and would love to see him come back. Oh, he's so great. I, I think it it could happen. I'm going to hope for it and then let Dana Barrett, the Sigourney Weaver, let her come back again. Let Dana Barrett get a proton pack and bust some ghosts. You know what would be really great too? Because I like that there's a lot of Ghostbusters in this, the characters we've seen that they had some, I don't know if you want to call it an academy or whatever, but was really would be really great. Peter's son, not his son, but steps or whatever it was, uh, Sigourney Weaver's, you right, know, Oscar. Uh, Oscar. Where's Oscar? I love to see. I would love to see Oscar. That'd be a great yeah, thing. Yeah, instead of the weird British guy, which I mean, I liked him okay. If that had been Oscar, oh, that would have been awesome. I you mean, I liked that of... character, but Oscar should have come back. Yes. It, you not, Don't get me wrong. I, I'm not talking about the the English accent, but look wise, he reminded me of the cartoon version of Egon. Yes, he did. Oh, big time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. big time. And maybe that was real serious. Yeah, maybe because he's very serious, yeah. and he took it real serious. And, and I'm like, oh, that's Egon. That's yeah. that's that's cartoon Egon. If I ever saw one. And I love Winston. <laughs> part of his thing is where he's developed that this the, you know expanding on Egon's technology with his yeah. crack research team that, that figured it out and. I I love Winston getting more involved as as he's he almost, he almost became like the 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 grandpa type he almost like yeah. the the parent for everybody. Well, I also love it in the background. I don't know if you noticed this in the background. Did you notice that they were shooting that that uh, oh uh, that love uh, slime from the second movie? Yes, they're testing yeah, it. They're testing out <laughs> new slime throwers and stuff. I was yes. like, I love it. I love it. seeing all that in the background. Uh, it's, yeah. it's just so much fun stuff. A lot of little Easter eggs. And fun, mm-hmm. and even get to see the firehouse when an actual fire department worked out of it. Yeah, absolutely. In a flashback that was the neat. Of the movie. And and I realized oh. when I was watching, it, I was like, oh, okay, that's like I think it was seventy years 
supposed to be 70 years before the first movie. Yeah, it was like 1904. Yeah, I think it was 1934. Yeah. So, yeah. 19, well, I thought it was 04, but maybe you're right. Maybe it was 34. Maybe, I thought it was I 04. Think, I thought it said 34. Well, either right, way. Watch it again. Gladly. Yeah. Oh, no. I have to. Oh, yeah. dog, oh, no. Which hold, the funny oh, thing is, my arm. <laughs> the critics are tearing it apart, but the fans of Ghostbusters fans are all over like, I loved it. We had a great time. So this is, uh, yeah, see, this is once thing. again, made a movie for the Ghostbusters fans. Whether the critics think it's a great cinematic masterpiece or not, doesn't matter. The fans are having fun. And that's that's yeah. who you made the movie for is for the Ghostbusters fans. Yeah, I loved it. Like I said, that's just me. But it, will they ever beat the original? I don't think so. But I'm not. I personally don't go in looking for that. I just want to enjoy myself and, and go yeah. into the Ghostbusters realm, if you will. Yeah. Go in that world and catch some ghosts and fight evil monsters, evil Babylonian gods. Quote quote. Yeah. Yeah. Quote quote quote. Little G. Yeah. And even uh, introducing like the new character that he's learning to be the fire mage or whatever. I love uh, him. He was so I've much seen fun. Him on several movies. I've seen him on yeah. several movies, and he. He is so much fun. Now, I've seen him kind of scary before, too. I can't remember what movie. So that's why it kind of had me curious about that character, too. I was like, you know, he could be good, bad. What? Yeah, I've I, seen oh, he could, I thought he was going to be a villain. I, when they me left too. him alone with the containment unit, I thought, don't leave him in there because he's probably possessed and he's going to open the thing. But then uh, they, they were and he was funny. his identity and his role. I was like, oh, And wow. he was so funny. He yes. was so funny. I, well, I, I get you a discount a on that. Oh, do you like this? Hey, I'll sell you a hundred bucks. <laughs> Sixty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he was so much like the, the the typical street merchant you'd always you know. See I loved him. Uh, I loved him. He was great, uh, and, and Dan Aykroyd was great in it because he made you really feel. For him. Yeah, <laughs> and he is. But you know what's funny? And I don't mean this is a disrespect. I really love, but the older he gets, the more and more he's starting to look like a conehead. <laughs> like the. <laughs> Uh, I'm talking about his old self for ten alive. We've run over an hour though, so I'm oh, going to go ahead and wrap this up. But yeah, we definitely give both of these recommendations. Hopefully, the third episode of X Men is just as good as the first two, and hopefully, the Thumbs next up. Ghostbusters film is just as much fun as this one was. Yes, but of course, Absolutely. we want to. Rem- I haven't, I haven't plugged anything. So, we, we're, hey, go to NeverlandPodcast.com. You'll find a big W logo. Click on that. Get yourself some energy drink powders. Uh, we'll not give you the jitters for gamers. Also, you'll find links for Podgagement. If you have a podcast, this will help you get your reviews. Clicking in there and making purchases does help me out. I do get a little bit of that. Also, while you're there, make sure you join the Neverlanders or the Pixies because girls are too clever. They don't get lost. We also want to thank right. Karen Kennedy, Ricky Pope of Christian Nerds Unite, and Darren Wilhite of the Wilhite and Wall Show. We want to remind you to send us an email, podcast at neverlandpodcast.com. We are on x.com or Twitter, Neverland PCast, and we're on Facebook of Neverland Podcast. Yeah, I know. I still have Neverland Podcast. I don't think I can change it to Fandom Nexus, so you just we live with it. Uh, there's a group. There's also a <laughs> fan page. I get to interact a lot more with the group. Uh, we even have some uh, some daily questions and fun interactions we set up in the Facebook group, so a lot of fun there. And of course, don't forget you can donate through our Patreon, patreon.com slash Neverland Podcast. Oh, by the way, I have a link for that one right on the website at neverlandpodcast.com. And also, if you look there in your show notes, Red Circle does have an exclusive feed where, guess what? I remove any ads that you probably heard during the show. I will take the ads away, put you a feed if you become a donor. Uh, it's very simple. You'll even get that at Patreon. You'll get a special feed that you can remove the ads. And, pay- and Patreon even has a special version where for, and I think I said it at 10 a month, you get video whenever we create video and any, anything else special uh, I make, it's very exclusive to the $10 club. Uh, and it does help out the show. Also, make sure we do have a shop where I have some merch. You can get the, the logo and some fun stuff on T-shirts, stickers, all kinds of fun stuff. Phone cases, all you know, all kinds of fun stuff. And, of course, if you're wearing a T-shirt and you have this logo on something, it gives you a great opportunity to say, hey, this is a great podcast. You know, I think you might like it. Sell it. You know, share it with your Christian and non-Christian friends because... I, both of us, I think, will all have fun talking about some of the fun things that we do here. And also your Christian friends, if they're looking for something to talk about, some of these nerdy things. Well, from a you know, Christian perspective, that's what this show is mm-hmm. becoming. Uh, so, yeah. Right. So there, well, I'm going to wrap it up, and we're going to end the show as I end it now every time. And let's see if Philip and I can coordinate on this. I'm going to give him a countdown on the camera. So, get lost. In an adventure! In an adventure! And he was still late for me, but that's okay. (laughs) We'll see you uh, probably very, very soon. Looks like you need a vacation. Enter the five-hour energy Where Will the Tide Take You sweepstakes. You could win a $10,000 Dream Beach vacation. Imagine jet setting off to a tropical paradise. 
having fun in the sun, or diving at a gorgeous reef. It's up to you. No purchase necessary. Go to 5hetide.com for official rules and to enter. That's 5hetide.com. Enter today. Ends June 30th, 2024. Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy.